Well, speaking of uh, a process that takes a really, really long time to happen, uh, I, I feel like it's been a hot little minute or and or a week since we've talked about Starship. And there was one kind of fun, exciting thing, um, and that's that they are stacking one of the nose cones on top of the full nose cone fairing. And this is, of course, footage from our wonderful friends at NASA Space Flight. Definitely be sure you're subscribed to them on YouTube because they do awesome like daily and weekly versions now where they're uh, narrating kind of and doing a summary of what happened. Uh, Jack Byer is doing a weekly summary now of like what happened during the week. So you don't have to really pay attention to absolutely every detail. Just kind of do a rundown. I think that's awesome. Um, Anyway, so this this nose cone, we don't really know exactly which serial number it's going to go on top of, but it is really the first time we've seen a nose cone go on top of ring sections for the first time since like the Starship In event. Day one. You know, yeah, since day one, basically. And this is a reminder here is that this whole thing, the the pointy part, the nose coney part, the pointy end up, and the ring sections, that's all the fairing section. So all of that goes on top of like what we see at the pads that it keep blowing up. You know, that serial number four, <laughs> serial number serial number two, serial number three, serial number four. Um, all the stuff that, that has gone out there and been stacked and, and blown up. This goes on top of all that. It just helps remind you how freaking huge this rocket is going to be. And this is the payload section. This is the fairing, basically. Well, will eventually be the fairing. Um, but it's going to be that same size. Like this will be unbelievably huge and some of these even have already the, the rcs thrusters um installed you might be able to see those little four marks yeah. um Looks i don't like know if that's fish gills or something um oh and these are uh what we're seeing on screen it looks like these like spikes all the way around the ring sections that's just so when they stack it it kind of funnels into place you know like it, it helps it's their kind of alignment tools just to make it so when they're stacking, you know, if it hits one of the, uh, those things, it just kind of slides into place and, and aims it down to make it easier for stacking. But um, somewhere there's some of the footage. I really like the RCS thrusters. They're these little, they're, they're very small, but they're very cool. Um, so between that and then just we have some super heavy construction bay pro, um, progress too. They're working on kind of the second layer. I bet at this pace, it seems like about once a week, we'll get another layer which it looks like each layer is probably a good, I don't know, five meters tall, you know, 15 feet tall or so. Um, and again, this is tr probably going to hit 80 meters. Um, so about 200, you know, 70 or 80 feet tall or something. Um, and or 260, I don't know, ish, whatever. Uh, so I don't know. I'm guessing this will probably be done in two months or at least to maximum height in two months. And they'll build out the interior as they're working on it. And so I wouldn't be surprised if, and this is the high bay for, you know, the super heavy booster. So my guess would be, let's see, middle of July right now, August, I'd say by middle September, it'll be full height and it'll be, and it'll be pretty well outfitted, you know, probably working on elevators and stuff already based on at least actually probably based on their pace. So, um, so to get ready to see that just go crazy. And of course we're still looking at their, they're starting to do last week. They did, um, they put a, Mass simulator on top of of serial number five in preparation for its static fire and hopeful hop. Here's the mass simulator. It's just a, a chunk of, of steel, basically, to make it heavy enough to have kind of the right proportions and the right um, flight characteristics um, to make it a more validated system for the little 150 meter hop it's supposed to do. So we're still fingers crossed for this weekend even to be able to do a static fire. And maybe by next time we're talking, they will have maybe done the hop. I'm not entirely hopeful just because it just keeps getting pushed mm -hmm. back, keeps getting pushed back, keeps getting pushed back. But still, I mean, slow and steady progress. You know, we're ready to see it and we're, we're just happy to see things just moving along so quickly there. So, yeah. Tim, I got a question for you. Yeah. Uh, so all the stuff they've been doing, all the testing, pressure testing, et cetera, et cetera, this is all in the upper stage, right? Yep. And so are they going to have to redo all of that for the super heavy booster as well? there'll be some kind of campaign probably to get the super heavy booster to that point too. Yeah. And is there a reason why they would do the upper stage first versus the, the booster? Yeah, there's a, a few reasons. First off, because it's smaller, it requires less engines um, and less engines. They, you know, that's kind of a, a limiting factor at this point. They're starting to ramp that up really quickly. And we're hearing longer durations of static fire testing 
Um, people have been kind of talking about like maybe they're pushing them even further than before, seeing really good results. It sounds like the Raptors really maturing a lot lately. Um, and that's awesome news. We want to hear that because then once, you know, as the design finalizes, we want to actually see them cranking these things out. Because again, the super heavy booster eventually will need 31 ish or more engines on the first stage so it's going to take a lot of manufacturing to get to that point but by only testing the upper stage first it requires less engines um and also the upper stage is is you know you can easily scale up the work done on the upper stage to the booster because it's basically just like ah just stick more engines on there um but the upper stage has to do some the, the wacky maneuver that whole belly floppy thing and that's a whole new territory. So they're going. That's going to take more work. Going to take um, more effort to actually finalize and really prove that out. Anyway, so you might as well work on that first because it has a longer, um, you know, experimental point. I guess before, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Were you? Where was I seeing? I thought you said this last week that it will actually kind of. Let me get my hand right here. It'll actually be a little bit leaning. The the. Yeah. SN5, like if they do the hop, it'll actually lean a little bit for some yep. reason. And the yeah, it's what, because what the, the reason the, for that? The reason is the the mount for uh, these basically any of these upper stages, the center of it can can hold three C level Raptor engines, and there are three. You know, where all none of those three are going through the center of the center of the rocket. They're kind of all like in a you know yeah. triangular shape around with you know the center point in between all three of those engines. Uh -huh. The idea being you know redundancy wise, if later on you know if if one fails during landing, you still have two firing and it's no big deal. But this first one flying will only have a single engine attached. The first little hop will only have a single engine attached because of that. It's slightly offset. The thrust is slightly okay. offset from the center line, and therefore in order to fly up, it'll basically lift off a little bit, kind of crooked. And then it'll basically tilt, the, yeah. essentially it'll tilt the rocket, uh, the whole fuselage. So the, the, you know, the rocket engine is pointing straight up through the center line, basically, right. okay. or through the center of mass um, in order to fly straightish, you know, yeah. pointy end yeah. up and to the right. <laughs> yeah. Pointy end crooked <laughs> or <laughs> flattish end. Mess. So we need to expect yeah. that even if it goes perfectly, a lot of people are going to be like, oh, it's all messed up because it's sideways. and Yeah, it flew crooked. They can't even yeah. fly rocket right. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I, love, I love clickbait. I love a good a good one. You <laughs> oh, know? you know the headlines are going to be like, SpaceX hops its starship, but it does it crooked. So, <laughs> so Elon fails. Sell Tesla. Yeah. yeah. Don't buy well, a like, Tesla. The whole thing last night about, or yesterday about the, the Bitcoin or the, the Twitter hack, uh, I saw a bunch of threads about like, oh, wait till Electrek says that Tesla's doomed because of uh, because Elon's Twitter got hacked, and like, <laughs> yeah, it's just a weird thing. Like, like I really enjoy when when someone gets me when I'm like I, I, a good title and I click on it. I'm like, what? I'm like, okay, all, all right, right, I see you. <laughs> I see their Associated Press <laughs> of all people. Yeah, you know. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this clip from our show. If that's just not enough for you and you want to watch the full episode, you can go to olfpod.com slash YT. And if you want more from us, you can consider becoming a Patreon member. You'll get early access to episodes. You can join our awesome community. You can actually watch us record live and get your name in the credits by going to olfpod.com slash Patreon. So thanks everyone for watching. Check back every Friday for new clips here and new episodes on the main channel. Thanks, everybody.